Buongiorno, signori, signora. My name is Jerk, and welcome back to the big show. How is everybody doing? Another week, another video, but don't you dare get used to it. Any day now, we're going to run out of new material to be bringing you because it's not like there's even more to show. There is. Oh, brother. Well, we better get this one out of the way so we can get back to that. Anyway, always on the grind, am I right? Actually, no. Let's relax. Maybe have an Aperol spritz and enjoy a cool breeze off the Mediterranean Sea. <sighs> yeah. Now we're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Italian Tech Tree Tier 8 Heavy Cruiser. Give it up for Brindisi. Take it in. There it is, sailing around the coastline of the Sea of Fortuna, looking good like the Amalfi, but 25% better, and all for that low, low price of 50% more. But surely, for that 9 million silver, you're going to be getting something truly special. Well, before we get into that, let me put our captain, his pals, and our modules up on the big screen, and it is... None other than the chillest and illest three-piece this side of the Atlantic. Francesco Mimbelli with Mikawa and Stormin Norman Scott. And if you've been around these parts, you will know that is exactly the same setup and build as I have on Amalfi. Which stands to reason because Brindisi is the Amalfi with one more turret. And that turret, as we mentioned, costs 9 million silver. Now that may sound like I'm disappointed in the purchase, but then you don't know Bo, because I love Amalfi, and therefore, by extension, I love Brindisi, because it is just like all the rest of the Italian cruisers, they have played the exact same way since Tier 5, and all you ever do is add another turret, or go from double barrels to triple barrels, but whatever you do, they play the same, and someday, if we're all good boys and girls, then maybe Santa Ouija will bless us with a Brindisi with another turret added to it, and we will call it Venezia, a girl can dream. But in the meantime, we have Brindisi, slinking around islands, playing coy, armed with 12 203 millimeter guns that if you aren't careful, will sap your face. Did you just say sap here? No, I said slap. I think he said sap. Maybe I did say sap. And speaking of, it has been a while, and there are new players in the game wondering, so let me just give you a 10,000 foot view of sap and why a thinking man or woman, I know there are a few of you out there, should be using it. Sap is like a blend of HE and AP. It does not overpin, it does not lose penetration over distance, but you have got to use your noggin a little bit when you use it and think about where you're aiming. First, it can ricochet at extreme angles, but mainly you need to know that it can damage saturate a portion of a ship quite quickly, and so you need to know where you can and actually aim to do damage with it. In the case of 203 millimeter guns, they have 54 millimeters, or is it 55 millimeters of penetration? Wait, how do we determine that? Let's just say you should just commit it to memory because the math isn't easy and it changes once sap gets at 305 millimeters. So let's just commit the uh, numbers to memory. 55 millimeters for the 54. I think it's 54, but whatever. It's not a difference in this case. So the big plus of sap is that it does a big chunk of consistent damage, but only if you aim at the right spot, which I'm not doing on this Ibuki, but I might as well keep using it because my AP would just bounce and ricochet at this angle. And speaking of the AP, don't forget it's there. While it isn't anything to write home about, there are no improved penetration angles, it doesn't have a short fuse. In fact, doesn't that one commander have a skill to make your fuse longer just in case you want even more overpins? 
you do need to recognize when a situation is being presented to you where you can actually use it. Uh, like a minotaur coming around broadside. Oh, you, sir, could you use this as an example for the class? Uh, thank you. So there goes our shot. And that will be the first ship sunk this match. Well, for me. And speaking of this match, what in the world is going on here you may be asking quite simple a story as old as time itself or at least four years in the case of this game our center spawn which as you know is best spawn looked at one another and collectively decided that rather than take advantage of the crossfires that were being presented to them decided the better option would be to overflow the flank that had already been won rather than support the other side or set up a defensive position as such we are now in a toilet bowl swirl of a game. However, that doesn't mean all is lost as Brindisi is on the case. And we have very low detection and we are very, very fast. And while you don't want to chase the kite, I have the speed and I have the concealment to do that. Because in this situation, even if the Ibuki were to never fire their guns again, they would be able to keep my team spotted. They could drop torps, what have you. So I am going to chase them down. And once I have them spotted, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for either my team to fire or for this Ibuki to give me a better angle for my sap to actually do something. And let's see what happens what? As soon as I fire, I'm spotted and I am targeted by four players immediately being lit up like a Christmas tree. I think it's safe to say there are some shells on the way, so I'm changing my angle and I'm going to hit my rolling smoke. And we do take a hit right there, but not too bad. However, the Ibuki's turned in and is now giving me a super good angle, so we are going to be able to take them out. And that is our second ship sunk and things are going crazy. Oh my goodness, what's coming from this? Oh, and there is an El Banco. Do you think we can get this over? I'm not sure. We will find out. And... Bonk. So, three ships sunk in quick succession. And, uh, you know, this is suddenly turning into a pretty decent game. As soon as I got that Elbing, I was looking and I was thinking, you know what? This could be a Kraken. This could be a Kraken depending on where the red team is. I actually like the blue team's positioning for a Kraken game. Maybe not for winning. But if I'm just playing to get a Kraken here, which I'm not, you will see. Then I like our position. Okay. Whoa. Those are Elbing Dwarves <laughs> just popping up out of nowhere. Okay. So there is the Seattle. In Seattle, you, sir are quite squishy. So I'm going to get a salvo off right here. I think I go ahead and drop the kids off at the pool. Maybe I don't. No, oh, they're shooting at our destroyer. And in doing so, they're going to go pretty, pretty flat broadside to me. So watch where I aim here. I do not aim at the, to uh, at the belt. I aim at the upper squishy portion and goodbye, sir. Quick assessment of the situation. The red team have a Musashi. Uh, I forget what destroyer it is, and a Napoli, and our team has myself a Ruprecht, and, uh, oof. Napoli, man, why you do me like that? We are brothers. Anyway, I'm positioning here because I, I was thinking at the time that the destroyer was behind me. And so I wanted to drop spot here once I could and then reverse into the cap. But as it is, I don't think the destroyer is actually back there. And we'll see how tanky Napoli is. And we're down to a three on three at this point. But we do have uh, the point lead just barely. So I'm going to back into the cap here and see what I can actually see. Basically, to make sure that we win, I need to get this cap. And I was thinking that, okay, Musashi, it may not sound like it, but it's actually quite squishy for sap shells. There's huge portions of it, as you're going to see me lob here. There are huge portions of it where this sap can pin, uh, though not if you actually shoot the rock in front of you. But, you know, four shells right there, that's pretty decent. A full salvo of sap can, it, theoretically, 
can probably hit for around 16, 18,000, somewhere around there. You're, you're very seldom, if ever, going to do that. But that does mean you can potentially one-shot many destroyers, but you've got to be cognizant of where you're aiming there as well because you'll damage saturate their bow or stern and you need to get all of those like in the main section of their boat which is really hard to do so it's usually going to take two salvos on the destroyer but anyway i have a you know this is where i was actually thinking i remember thinking i was like do i want to get the kraken and sink this musashi because that would uh, definitely be doable or do i want to win <laughs> and I said, I want to win, and if if I can get a Kraken in the process, well, that's even better. Um, I would love to actually be able to get one more salvo off on this Musashi, but I just didn't think I could. I'm trying to get my turrets turned around here, and I think I'm going to get uh, one more salvo off, but it's not going to be enough. And so, yeah, somebody else is going to get the Musashi, which is good because, yes, we want to win here. And I'm going to get this cap secured. But when I was spotted like there, that kind of told me that their destroyer was not over on this half of the map as I was afraid of. So I should have some time to finish getting this cap. And then we will see what actually happens from there. Ooh, Musashi just got a high caliber. So... My team's still taking a punishment, but I look over. Okay, Musashi's dead. We should have this wrapped and in the bag at this point. So I just got to find my crack. And, and oof, Napoli is not, somewhere, not something that I can do a lot of damage with sap against. It's just so tanky. Yes, I could hit the tip of the, their bow, maybe, for a little bit of damage, but that is about the only spot where they have armor thin enough that these shells will actually do anything. So, I have to think right here. I'm like, um, where is that destroyer? I was targeted by two ships for a brief moment there, so obviously one's the Napoli, one is the destroyer, but I'm not really sure where they are, so I'm trying to... Re Those are Napoli Torps, no question about it. Too slow. Uh, and I'm going to be able to dodge these, but my thinking was, let me get positioned where, once again, I only have to deal with Torps from the Napoli. And uh, once I have that, this Napoli can't really do much to me either, because Napoli's only got HE and AP, and if I don't show them broadside, well, then, you know, nothing to worry about. So, I think, perhaps... Now I'm getting shot at by the destroyer. Look, it's over on that cap. Okay, don't have to worry about it at all. So my process is very simple right here. We sink the Napoli. We're going to win. I know they probably <laughs> are trying to torp me as well. I am all too happy to do that uh, exchange. We get our torps off. They get theirs off. I go down. Napoli goes down, and there is Kraken 474 in the Brindisi. I'm checking with Janice down in accounting, and she is giving me the signal that it is, in fact, 474. So let's skip to the said scoreboard. 3,484 XP for a very good game. And you know, not too shabby by my team there. Our weak side, they held on as long as possible, delayed the red team enough, so GG's all around, and that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you like the spicy meatballs, give this video a like. If you don't think this ship offers enough of an upgrade over Amalfi to justify the price, well, I'm right there with you, so no need to dislike. Questions, comments, leave them down below, and if you want to be there to see whoever, whenever, we have on next thing about hitting subscribe. Thanks for watching, folks. I will get back out there for another, and we will talk then.